Hi everybody, Natasha Koch here uh, with the Van City Scoop Live. Six o'clock on Thursday, I'm in the car at the McDonald's parking lot. Just grabbed my coffee so that I can sit and talk to you live before I continue driving in traffic. So I hope everybody's doing good today. And today we're going to, hi Jesse, hi Maribeth. Thanks for joining. So today we're going to talk about some of the questions that you should ask before buying a home. So especially if you're first time buyers, this is gonna to apply to you. These are some of the questions that you may not have considered or thought about. So most first time buyers jump into buying a home, um, well, right away based on falling in love with it. So it's really easy to get captivated by uh, really nice, decor really nice furniture that you're not actually buying um, you know granite countertops and they just fall head over heels in love with the property hi Lisa thanks for joining um, and they don't think about some of the really important factors that you should think about when you're buying a home so let's talk about these three main factors so number one is the offering price and what it's actually based on. So when a buyer goes to, hi Gina, thanks for joining. When a buyer goes to make an offer, um, if, a, if you're out there and you're basing the offer price on other current properties for sale, hi Mindy, um, it's not a great strategy. It really doesn't have any weight or bearing. What you really have to do is um, make an offer based on recent sales and the only way you're going to obtain that information um, is through your realtor so it is not uncommon for realtors to search a list of properties that have sold in the area that are similar to that property and so you really can only base an, base an offer price on that um, if it's a really active market then chances are that the last unit that sold you know you may have to pay a little bit more than that one because it sets the precedence for the for the next sale but that really depends on the kind of market it is number two condition of the home so I know that I have been out with first-time buyers and it's really difficult for them to look past you know some of the cosmetic upgrades um, but you'd be surprised that some of them don't cost as much as you think so get estimates for repairs don't assume that all repairs are going to be you know breaking the bank maybe you can't afford to do some of those repairs and maybe you're actually handier than you thought um, and maybe the property's already been adjusted as far as pricing goes um, you know to accommodate some of those so you know again talk to your realtor about uh, checking what the properties in the area have been selling for and maybe you know the property is is uh, priced effectively so hi Andrea thanks for joining my live number three location of the home hi Jenny um, so the location is probably the most important I can't stress enough location 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 um, you might walk into a home that has a beautiful open concept kitchen fantastic everything all built upgraded and then a roaring train goes past the back end of the house and shakes the entire thing and I'm not saying for all those people out there that have a property that's on a train track that it that you shouldn't buy it but I will tell you that those are things that you really need to look at because even though you may get a good deal on the property uh, it'll be a little more difficult to sell later so let's talk a little bit deeper about those three areas hi Jenny hi Patsy thanks for joining so okay price price how much did a seller pay I get a lot of buyers that ask me how much did the seller pay for the house originally well mr. seller paid you know two hundred thousand for a property that's now listed for eight hundred thousand uh, in 1994 oh my gosh how come he's asking so much well the truth is that you know really what is bearing on this question is whether or not the market has gone up or down if the market has gone up um, really should we judge whether or not they've made a profit good for them they've made a profit maybe they've done a lot of work to the house so use the information on what the seller has paid for the house just to uh, basically determine whether or not um, the property values have gone up and just use it as a guideline hi Dwayne happy birthday belated and hi Patsy if I didn't say hi to you already and Jenny 
Um, okay, so how much does the seller owe? So this is a question that's more um, accessible in the United States. We don't really have that information here in Canada, nor really should we. But you can kind of do a little bit of investigating. So let's say uh, a property was purchased five or six years ago, and you just make the assumption that they purchased it with five or 10% down. Uh, then you calculate what the property has gone up by and a general calculation of what they've paid off on it. And you can sort of figure out how much equity is in the property. This is, uh, this is a good exercise to do because it'll also give you the ability to determine if maybe there's some negotiating room because chances are if somebody bought it you know last year in a crazy busy market uh, they probably don't have a lot of equity so even if they would like to negotiate with you and sell it maybe they can't maybe there's not enough room in you know in the uh, property value versus what they owe hi John thanks for joining so uh, your agent can give you um, sort of a list of what, well, a definite list of what other properties have sold for so that you can get an idea. It's kind of a reverse market evaluation when you're buying. So we just see what else is selling in the building or in the area uh, that's relative in square footage. And then uh, you can do your due diligence in making your offer. So uh, another question regarding price is how many offers has the seller received? If it's been on the market for a little while, have they gotten any? If it's priced below market value, perhaps they are trying to encourage a multiple offer situation. And for all you first time buyers out there, don't be scared of a multiple offer situation. Uh, sometimes it's a strategy and then the strategy backfires and there aren't multiple offers anyway. So, um, Put your best foot forward and you know what they say if it's meant to be it will and um, a lot of times in in when I'm representing clients I try to uh, present offers directly to the seller uh, for my buyers and that gives me an opportunity to you know talk a little bit about the buyer tell a little story um, and just you know put a, put a, a more personal spin on the offer presentation and not make it only about uh, the number on the piece of paper so Hi guys, hi John, hi Kim, thanks for joining. Um, and then lastly, how long has the house been on the market? So sometimes there's some room for negotiation based on how long it's been on the market. Uh, your realtor can pull up houses that have been on for quite some time. Uh, rule of thumb sort of in the city, you know, urban centers, you know, anything that's been on the market for 90 days plus um, and hasn't reduced in price already, probably are open to the possibility of a little more negotiation and then some of the outskirts you know um, uh, homes you know they might they might take a little bit longer but again your realtor will be able to tell you what the average days on the market is so that you can sort of base uh, what you're searching for on that so number two let's talk about condition big things to look for on condition of homes and it's not paint and it's not carpet uh, the main things that are going to cost you money that you do need to be prepared for and check into is things like the roof. How old is the roof? Uh, what type of foundation there is? You know, um, people don't think about this kind of stuff. There's older homes that have uh, a block foundation or a perimeter concrete foundation uh, or a solid slab. Um, you want to check the drainage, you know, around the foundation, make sure that there's no leaking. Now, I'm not an expert in construction, but I've definitely seen a lot of homes that have had problems, and those problems end up costing you a lot of money, and you don't get to do some of the renos that you'd like to and get that paint and counters and all the things that you'd like cosmetically because you spend all your money on fixing some of the underlying repairs. Um, insulation in the walls and attic. Uh, windows. Has the plumbing or wiring been updated? Uh, lots of those kind of things you really as a first-time buyer it's super important to check into those things and you can do this by having a building inspection done um, and then you can get quotes by specific companies that focus on those areas. So definitely do your due diligence on uh, the condition of the home. And then number three which is the location, location, location. Um, what kind of properties are nearby? You know, are there industrial properties nearby, commercial properties nearby, um, apartment buildings? And not that that's a bad thing, but again, you know, uh, for resale value, you know, maybe a house that is right next to some sort of industrial plant 
may not have the same resale value as one that is in a, a nice family neighborhood with a school. Um, what are the neighborhood demographics? Who's living there? I mean, you can find most of this stuff out when you Google it nowadays anyway, but it's really good to check. Uh, another thing you could do actually is check uh, police records. There's actually a public, uh, and I don't have the website on me right now, but if you can message me and I'm happy to get it for you. Uh, you can check how many times police have to attend a certain area. If you have little kids, you know, that might be important to you that you don't want to move into a high crime area. Um, what are the schools for that specific area? Schools, schools fill up quickly and especially good ones. So you want to make sure that if you are planning on having kids or if you have kids already, uh, that you are going to get into the school that you want them to be in. Don't just assume that because it's close by that it falls in that catchment area. So you want to make sure. Um, and then lastly, nuisance. Are there any nuisance factors? And nuisance, what I mean by nuisance is traffic. Uh, is it on a busy street, a train, like I said, going through your backyard or close by, even barking dogs and sometimes going to the property and visiting it a few times to determine that uh, might be a good idea. Go at rush hour, go, uh, go at really busy times of day um, just to check it out. Freeways that are close by or like I said, the industrial plant next door. I mean, are they crashing and smashing while you're trying to work at your home office? Who knows? So those are kind of the three areas uh, that you really want to focus on. You know, uh, you want to focus on the price, you want to focus on the condition of the home, and then most important is location, location, location. So sometimes when it's a busy, busy market, we just don't have, or the buyers don't have time to ask those questions. It's really good to do some research before you're even ready to buy, especially when the market is busy. So that way you've done your due diligence in advance and you're ready to go uh, when, you are, when you are out there looking for a property. So ask your agent what kind of market it is right now. I can tell you that we do have a little bit more time to spend with buyers these days um, and then just act accordingly. So for all you first time buyers out there, this is going to be your time to get into the market and I'm pretty excited for you. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, Van City scoop today and I look forward to seeing all of you next time every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Thanks for joining everyone and hey Brent, how's Ontario? Nice to see you and thanks for joining Kim and all of you. I really appreciate you viewing and we'll see you next time, 6 o'clock. Okay, have a good night. Bye-bye.